I'm Mark Morris. I'm a 20-year-old uh, sophomore over at Hilbert College in uh, Hamburg, New York, a uh, suburb of Buffalo. I have a uh, detralgy of flow with pulmonary atresia, pretty much in layman's terms, no pulmonary artery. He was three days old when he had his first heart surgery. It was frightening because he's our first child. He's our only mm. child. So it wasn't like I knew anybody who had it. You find the information you need, and then you just pretend you go on like life is normal. We're kind of stuck in the middle going to a pediatric cardiologist, but he doesn't want to be there. He's 20 years old. Yeah. He wants to be where there's adults. So there really is a missing link. Well, that's actually exactly the reason we're here. Um, I mean, the transition between pediatric care, what we really found is that um, the adult cardiac center and the adolescents and the transition program uh, that we saw here was just fantastic. Mark was looking at uh, needing to undergo a, a procedure for uh, a valve dysfunction. He had other procedures in Buffalo where the plan was to balloon his valve and the concern really by the family was that this would not provide adequate relief for the problems with his heart and how he was feeling. Yeah, we were confused. Uh, people weren't answering questions where we were. It was just really it was really a tough time, and all we wanted was to have a plan. You know, we're sort of crazy that way. We wanted a plan. Dr. Daniels gave us one, and everybody else just made it all possible. Well, the alternative procedure that we were considering for Mark uh, was to perform a transcatheter pulmonary valve replacement, uh, termed the Melody valve. So we set out a, a three-day plan, basically, uh, in which he would arrive in Columbus undergo studies uh, the following day and get a better sense of whether or not he'd be a candidate for this procedure. I think today it's going to be the nerve-wracking part to figure out what's going to happen. Mark's having his very first MRI. It's, we're real excited about it because it's going to give us a definitive idea of what's going on in his heart. So how do you feel? I'm a little nervous. Mark? Ready? He's going to be with us about 45 minutes to one hour, okay? Relax, don't He's just gone in. He's excited. They could give him, you know, classic rock music to listen to. Are you all right? Yes. They tell him all he needs to do is lay back and relax. He should be just fine with it. Uh, all right, how was it? Man. He did Stressful. a great job. Good job. Let's get you to the next step. We'll find Dad and... Go yep, over to yep. children's. Uh, going now to, to deal with the stress test and then uh, hopefully get some meat afterwards. Follow the, the blue ribbon. We wanted to go invasive very fast in our uh, where we were coming from. So being able to do an MRI and then doing the stress test, a lot of things right off the bat is fantastic for us. Is he Dr. Daniels today? Yes. Stress test and then maybe with like them at 3 o'clock. Um, he underwent an exercise study uh, in general to see how he would do with an exercise test. Three, two, one. He did not uh, perform uh, well enough uh, to make us feel comfortable with leaving his valve alone at this point. So, so we're discussing now with him about proceeding with pulmonary valve replacement in the cath lab. Um, he has narrowing of his pulmonary valve and also leakiness and sufficiency of the valve uh, that's probably led to a, a little bit of right ventricular enlargement. You know, Dr. Cribbs asked you all the questions. I'm all updated on everything. I think we feel really comfortable with your heart and what's going on. So, so tomorrow's gonna come in for his cardiac catheterization. Uh, we've discussed the procedure with him and they're agreeable to go ahead and proceed with a cardiac catheterization to determine if he is a Melody transcatheter valve uh, replacement candidate. So Mark, all they're waiting for now is Dr. Cheatham to come in. He'll probably talk to you one last time. Yeah. Uh, make sure you're ready to go. You ready to go? I know everything that could happen. Having the best people, you minimize at risk, but catheterizing alone has a risk of heart attack and death and bleeding. And he heard all this for the first time yesterday when he was signing these papers. So if he worries, I worry twice as much for him. We don't mess around. We go to the best. We'll measure his blood pressure in all the chambers. 
We'll measure the amount of oxygen in all of his chambers. He has four chambers in the arteries. And then we'll take a movie picture. We call it an angiogram. And it will show us exactly where his current problem is. And then after we do all that, then there's a series of things we have to do before we're ready to put the valve in. All right. Good. Fancy room, lots of monitors, big cameras. Come to see him in a few hours. I'll see you in a few hours. We'll FaceTime with everybody. All right. Okay. Okay. We'll watch the Yankees game tonight. All right. Okay. He'll be under general anesthesia for the procedure, and once everything's in place, the number of measurements are done, there's compliance testing of the valve to see if the valve's going to fit into place, and once everything has been measured and confirmed, then the Melody valve hopefully will be placed uh, in, in the conduit position. He had a lot of time for the tissue to build up calcium, so he had large chunks of calcium to a piece of mobile calcium right there. This is the valve. Um, vein segment from the neck vein of a cow that's been shaved down and it's been sewn inside the stent. We can put a new tube and a valve inside the old system that they have with a catheter. So we can go right through their little blood vessel in their leg or their neck blood vessel and we can go directly into their deteriorated valve and tube and we can put a brand new valve inside without open heart surgery and they can go home 24 hours. It's obviously a big advance and for people like Marcus it's a, it's a huge advancement in their life because they were looking at many open heart surgeries in their lifetime. They were able to put two stents in. They're going to now take pictures and see if they can prepare to put the valve in. So we had to do a fair amount of work to push all the calcium out of the way so that we could put the new valve in. So it shows you we've got a really nice valve and it's working, it's working really great. Everything looks very good. He has very little narrowing. He has essentially no leakiness of the new valve. Obviously he's avoided another open heart surgery after this procedure. Yeah, he did, he did very well right now. A big relief that they were, everything worked out. Uh, Dr. Cheatham has been fantastic and he's got better blood flow. He'll feel better. So we're just excited about everything. He can be a normal college student. Yeah. So we just want to say thanks to everyone. Today, you know, getting discharged, you know, being able to go back to Buffalo, get back to living a normal life. I can go back to school tomorrow. I'll go back with, to visit my regular cardiologist in Buffalo in about a month to check the leg area, and then come back uh, here to Columbus to do follow-up procedures within the next six months and a year. Just everyone, it doesn't matter who you spoke to, whether it's the head of the department to the wonderful woman down the cafeteria that wanted to give me a hug. I mean, it's just so sweet. The place has just exceeded any expectation anyone could have ever had. Dr. Daniels and Dr. Cheatham are incredible. You think they have taken care of Mark from the day he was born.